I was that guy. I was like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want kids. And people were telling me, they're like, Derek, this is going to be the hardest thing you ever did in your life. And I was like, man, I don't know. You should like get shot through your knee. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Dadding While Blank. Today we're talking with Derek Wyda, a dad of twin boys, an army veteran, a professional bodybuilder, and he happens to be an above the knee amputee. He's got a, uh, an incredible story. You're really gonna love it. Uh, also, just so you know, the whole interview, he was just flipping around a knife, because he's a badass, uh, but also kind of a sweetheart. He'll see, it's great. Anyway, here's Derek. The show is called Dadding While Blank, right? So help me, help me fill, in, fill in the blank here. How do you describe yourself? you know, in, in with regards to your leg? Technically, I'm, I'm missing my right leg above the knee. So I'm a right leg above knee amputee. Also called an AK, which is funny because I got shot with an AK and that's how I lost my leg. So, so you know, synergy like, really is what it yeah, is. Right, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> um, it, uh, I was, you know, doing some research about your story, which is incredible. For, uh, I should have started with Thank you for your service, man. I, oh, thank you. It's an honor to talk with you, um, and I appreciate what you've done for our country. You you got injured in Iraq, yeah, uh, in, in in a gunfight. Can you kind of set the the story a little bit for us for our audience? Yeah, no. I so um um I, I I'll, I'll mess with you a little bit here. We like stubbing your toe is an injury, but you get combat wounded in Did Iraq. Did I say injury? God damn <laughs> yeah. it! Yeah. I made a note. Don't say injury. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, cause that just yeah. is so disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's one of those funny things. Um, no, I got, um, it was, uh, I got, I got shot, um, side to side through the knee on a house raid in Iraq in 2007. That, that's what I did for my night job over there, you know, like house raids. And then during the day we did presence patrols and things like that. You know, that the wars weren't going well and we, we realized we had to do like a counterinsurgency operation and to do counterinsurgency you have to you've heard probably heard this like win the hearts and minds mm -hmm. so it's not like you can't just go trash in somebody's neighborhood and it makes sense because if some other country's army was walking down my street just you know pissing in the road and kicking people and telling them to get back in their house and be like yeah let's suit up we're gonna shoot these guys you yeah. know and during the day when i say presence patrol what that means is like going door to door and asking people like hey how are you doing? Is there anything that you need? How can we help you guys build up your community? You know, and we would go to schools and like, what do you need? Or when we'd bring notebooks and desks and generators and things like that, you know? So that was my day job. But uh, at night we were doing, you know, direct action raids and things like that. And I just so happened to, um, uh, on this night, we had, a, we had a, like four target houses lined up and just to make the story short, we showed up to this house and as we were breaching the door, we heard the guys inside wake up and rack their AKs and the door swung open and I took a step in and I just I just walked into gunfire and I caught a bullet side to side through the knee. And then I was what they called limb salvage for four years. Um, against my wishes, I, I wanted them to cut my leg off right then and there because they were gonna, they medically retired me and stuff. Four years later, I finally won the argument with the doctors and I got my leg cut off and now I'm uh, not a disabled person, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. I, I would think like uh, most people would be like trying to hold on to keeping their leg as long as possible and, and, and make it work in any way. But you were just like, nah, I gotta, it's gotta go. Like I gotta move on. I have friends who have, they've been wounded overseas and then they're, they have legs that don't work. They don't do the things a leg should do, but they don't cut it off because they're like, it's my leg. So that, that seems to be the natural human reaction, which is why I was having trouble with the doctors because I don't care. I'm not a sentimental guy. Like if the leg doesn't do what a leg should do, and if it's not allowing me to live the life I want, why would I want it? Because it's my toes, you know, I don't care about my toes. They were ugly anyways, you know, but um, yeah, I, I, so a lot of people say they don't understand how I can see it that way, but I don't understand how people can see it the other way. I don't know, just different. When did you find out uh, you're, you're, you have two, you have twins, right? I have 18 month old twin boys, uh, Max and Jack. They're IVF babies. Uh, honestly, for me, I never want, I just, I'll never, I never wanted kids. And I think that was a mistake. Um, I think I was just dumb or scared. And a big thing for me is I always wanted, I just wanted to be in the military. And that's kind of like a singles guy, single guy's job. So I met my wife 
um, in 2016. And, and I was, I think, 31 or so at the time, and she was 30. And right, like really soon after we met, she was just like, I want to have kids. I was that guy. I was like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want kids. But um, as as her and I grew closer together and got married, you know, I was in love with her. And then we started ha- trying to have the kids. And for a while, it wasn't bothering me that we weren't having her. But she was getting, you know, like more and more devastated every month. And then we went to the fertility doctor, and we just found out that there were some reasons we couldn't have kids naturally, probably. So we went the IVF route. Um, and we did that whole thing. And so we wound up with twin boys. But now that I have kids, it's, I was just like, man, this is the greatest thing ever. Like, I'm so glad I had kids, you know? And people were telling me, they're like, Derek, this is gonna be the hardest thing you ever did in your life. And I was like, man, I don't know. You should like get shot through your knee. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, very difficult. Uh, is there anything like day to day that is difficult for you or when, or even when they were first born or? So at night, I don't wear my leg when I go to bed, but your kids like to cry. So I have to crutch, I get on my crutches and I crutch across the house and then I stand on one leg over their crib and scratch their back. And sometimes there's like, I'm like, oh man, I'm getting pretty sore, boy. Would you mind not crying for a little bit, you know? But, um, and then it's, it, it's hard, you know? Um, like at night, especially when they're 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 little, and you like transfer them from the crib to the changing station. It's like I just grab the boys and I hop on one leg, and you know. But I never, never stop and think about like how it could be different or better or something. Like that's my life. It is what it is. Uh, for anyone out there that um, any parents out there that that might be dealing with a disability, um, what what advice would you give them? You know, what would you say to them uh, right now? You know, I actually, I actually think it's kind of cool because I, um, I didn't have a dad myself who was like, he fed me and he, and he paid for our house, but he just wasn't a good person. You know, I didn't have a role model. I didn't have a, a, a relationship with him in that way. And uh, I, I realized if just, just kind of because the way I live my life, that, that the way I've learned to live my life, because, you know, like I'm, I'm missing my leg, but I, I still compete in you know, high level sports and do a lot of things that are difficult and I do them without complaining and my boys are watching that. And and if they continue to see me do that, maybe their narrative someday will be different from mine. And they'll be like, I watched my dad work hard all those years and he was missing a leg and he never complained and he never quit, he didn't give up. And so maybe if they get to a point in their life where they hit an obstacle or a challenge, they're just like, no. If my dad can do that, I can do this. The catch is I gotta work hard and do well and not complain. And that's really hard. (laughs) You will no doubt inspire your kids. Uh, You've inspired me and I'm sure you're gonna inspire a lot of other people with this. So uh, thank you for for being on Dadding While AK. Yeah, (laughs) Dadding While AK. We'll go with Dadding While AK. AK. Awesome. No, I appreciate uh, the invite and having the chance to be here. Thank you.